Thank you, Ambassador Glassman. It's this is a day we've been waiting for, and we're so excited to have each of you in the audience to be part of this. We want you to listen. We want you to ask questions. We want you to feel the depth and breadth of what we're stretching and where we'll be. For me, you know, think about the discoveries that have been made. We can now fix hearts. We can restore hearing and deafness. Now is the time for us to become wildly ambitious to strengthen and fix brains. Science has a multitude of directions that we can spend money and all come together to do the next big thing, global warming, alternate fuel, stem cell for cancer cures, but none more impactful and exciting as discovering how to build brain resilience and regeneration. Who doesn't want that? We all do. So for me, what's exciting is what used to be science fiction is now science faction. The question as to whether cognitive brain performance can be augmented is no longer science fiction. Due to advances in brain science, we are turning the impossible into the possible and the probable into reality. And you're going to be part of hearing some of those discoveries today. The possibility may exist in the near future that a person can take advantage of several approaches for the brain, whether it's cognitive enhancement through drugs, through brain implants, through stimulation, brain-machine interface, or even ablation of certain brain areas. But this very day, you can either be smarter or lose a little bit of your cognitive capacity from what we've learned. You can strengthen and regain intellectual capacity, just as you know that with mental exercise, you can increase your physical well-being. So to realize that you're reducing your brain power or increasing it should empower each of us to be part of this team of what is brain health all about. We are witnessing, for me as a brain scientist, it's exciting because we are witnessing lightning speed advances in brain and brain imaging and they've led to vast discoveries about what goes wrong with the brain. We can see, if you have dementia, we can now detect that very, very early in the disease process. Or kids in poverty, what does their brain look like? Or someone that's starting to develop dementia or concussions, the shearing of white matter and long-term follow-up. I think we now have made enough progress to energetically wholeheartedly, whole brain teams, the big, next big thing, which is identifying markers of brain health. We haven't had ways to see what is it when a person is here and they move to here. We always think about the brain and what happens when it declines, but not when it's moving to higher level of function. And that's what one of our major charges is to really seek healthier states. We have metrics of your heart. You know, we go once a year and look at our blood pressure, our cholesterol, VO2 max, heart rate, all of that. We need that for the brain. And that's really what we're dedicated. So we can say, you know what? You've slipped. That's not acceptable for your brain. Or you've lost this much capacity. We need to ratchet it back up. At this inaugural Brain Health Summit, we have an incredible talent of panelists that it's, it's a dream team, if you will, and when you meet each one of them, you will see how incredibly intellectually charged they are to move us on this new frontier of brain resilience and regeneration. To think that our brain has such inherent capacity to build resilience at almost all levels of cognitive function. We, you can increase your brain blood flow, your connectivity, the white matter, literally by how you think, young and old. And yet, you know, we think so much about young children, but we forget about our brain later, and it matters for the rest of our lives. It's the most important thing that we do. So what is resilience, and what is regeneration? For me, these two work synergistically together, almost like the yin and the yang, in this continuous cycle across the lifespan in health, injury, and disease. So I like to ask people, what is resilience to you? It's typically a combination of 
the ability to flex, to bend but not break. You know, when we think about our military individuals, we see this ability. You want them to be able to take on things but not break. Resilience in induces robust protection against subsequent losses. So the more resilience you have in your brain, the least likely you will show the losses. Think about our brain being preconditioned to resist the effects of brain injury and ward off cognitive losses from the things that we take. We know it for our body. The stronger you are physically, the quicker you rebound. We haven't even begun to tap the potential of our human brain. So what is regeneration? Regeneration is the brain regaining function when the brain's injured or faced with losses. To think that your brain makes neurons every single day till the day you die, neural connections can be rewired and you can work around. If you look at the front page of what happens with concussions, you would think that brain damage is permanent. Except in the most severe cases, every single person can increase their level of performance. We're going to have three panels today, as Ambassador Glassman talked about, hearing from the leading experts in ways to promote brain health fitness and thereby increasing resilience and regaining brain function. In education, we'll ask questions like, can our youth increase their intellectual capacity, whether they're gifted or low performers, those in poverty or those in high means? We're letting our brain decline to not achieve high status, mainly because innovation is not driving much of what we're doing, and we're finding ways. In aging, what is the hope of building greater resilience? Will it serve to attenuate the losses when we have medical problems, chemotherapy, general anesthesia, neurological setbacks, and reduce the years of suffering from dementia the longer our cognitive sp span is longer? And in brain injury, concussions, which the incidence of concussions is the largest thing that affects our community and our world. If you have a concussion, we can figure out ways to restore that. We can minimize losses, speed up recovery, and work against anxiety and post-concussive symptoms. We see each of you here today as very important to this summit. I want you, again, to be fully engaged. Join us in asking the most probing questions that's affecting your sphere of influence. And let's begin to move the envelope forward in a big way to achieve brain resilience and regeneration. We're honored to be here today. Thank you so much.